Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Play Common Mission Barbarossa to Berlin. Here we are still trying to protect the bridge over River Lisa. And um, yeah, 88 mil flag is on it. Now going up against not only one but two T-34s. Yeah. So this is a rather dangerous situation because um, being targeted by two tanks is uh yeah, I mean that's not really good. An open and clear day. Although I think ADA mil can do a pretty good job over longer distance than T-34s. It's a bit of a... Yeah, I mean, unfortunately these Panzers cannot really support it because these T-34s are just beyond its line of sight. Only the infantry is within its um, zone of fire or arc of fire. And this artillery is still trying to hold these tanks back, but I don't know whether it's going to really be... Um, effective anymore because it's now being targeted by multiple tanks as well there. Yeah, the I mean, this is really complicated. I don't know how many minutes I spent on um, constructing all these elaborate schemes here. But um, I don't know whether I'm making things a bit more complicated than it really needs to be. These arc of fire and zone of fire. I think the AI is going to take over, even though the enemy might not exactly be in this um, cone. Um, if, you know, if the gun discovers any enemies nearby, then I think it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to go out of hiding and start shooting. But that's what I um, count on, these AIs to really behave um, like you know, real uh, soldiers or real units. Uh, trying to set the arc of fire a bit closer um, because I find the tanks and the guns have a different arc of fire, so I want it to be closer so their shooting uh, ability or shooting range is synchronized a bit. Checking out the other side on the road, it's a pretty short distance, but it just measures the distance on the object um, that are supposedly flat on the road. If the tank with its high profile comes into view, maybe it is able to shoot a bit farther. That's my um, thinking, at least. So yeah, I'm just giving them a bit shorter cone of fire or zone of fire. Only targeting the armor. I don't really care about the infantry anymore after they have been roundly um, pummeled by these uh, tanks and guns in the last episode. And um, these tanks are going to go behind this uh, crack 88 mil in the brush in order to support it. Yeah, aiming down the road here, down the highway between Oral and Intensk. I don't know which way um, the Germans are supposed to go. I think it's um, headed toward Intensk after this, if I were to achieve a victory. So yeah, just checking line of sight at any point down the road, I think it's all set. The tanks will be a great help and they're all better in Panzers. And the final gun, just checking. Similar uh, line of sight to the other guys, just further down the road. And um, yeah, but this is the most this is the most problematic. And I changed the arc of fire to be appropriately aimed at those two tanks. And I hope that uh, yeah, I mean you know the 88 mil has been firing at a really good clip. So yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, just waiting for the enemies to come into our view. That's it, and hopefully the guns here have some, uh, you know, target to shoot. All right, so more and more tanks are appearing. Fire, 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 fire. Yeah, so this, uh, okay, so now being bombarded by the T-34s, and um, yeah, it's a pretty dangerous situation. But start shooting though, not faced. Oh, ricochet, unfortunately. Yeah, this glasses armor on the front of the T-34 is a very special. So Arnold is able to withstand it, but not there. It's been penetrated. Okay, once again. That is a really powerful gun. Gun hit, so I think the gun probably is out of service. And we see some KV-1s, the big tanks. The, the humongous monstrous tanks that can withstand um, this kind of uh, artillery fire or howitzers. Yeah, so these guys make an appearance and and we are being hit very much so, shaken and oh my goodness, he was able to knock down one T-34, which is a bonus. I thought that he would not be able to do that anymore. 
Um, yeah, the KB bombers are really impressive tanks. It's a huge monstrous tanks that is probably more than 80 tons, and I don't think it can go over the bridge over there because it's simply too heavy. Yeah, so I think uh, I was able to knock out one T-34, so it's a win for us in the last episode, the last turn. So we'll just continue uh, using our guns and uh, exploiting them. I think we are trying to hit one, one side right now, just concentrate our fire on one side, not trying to you know, go up against these two groups of tanks at the same time. It's going to be very difficult to do anything in the case. And the 88 mil still has a really good range on the tanks to its left. So I think it's still going to concentrate on the targets as they find it. And I was wrong, the T-34s are still active, both of them. So he wasn't able to knock any of, any of the T-34s out. And um, it's running low on AP rounds, but then it can still damage the T-34s with its uh, remaining HE rounds. Yeah, high explosive rounds, that's probably meant for aircraft, but still effective against the armor. And here more and more tanks are coming in on the right side down the highway. So KB-1s and T-34s, a mix of, very volatile mix of tremendous amount of uh, power that we've encountered so far in this LP. Okay, so 88 mil was able to knock one tank out, but there's one more that came coming out. And then he was uh, able to quickly um, calibrate its uh, gun against 88 mil. And here is no different. And finally was able to make short work of the pirate, unfortunately. So all our guns, oh my goodness, 88 mil is also out. I don't know whether it was T-34 on the uh, ridge, I think it was. He was able to knock down the flag. So we are down 188 mil, which is a big loss for us. A big loss. The other remaining 88 mil one has been found along the brush and is now being targeted. So we are trying to fire back to protect ourselves and to survive. And uh, we are able to do just that. The Russian tanks are now really moving. They're just standing still and being distracted by the perhaps the gun that was just broken off or the 88 mil that has been just destroyed. They're still um, kind of distracted by it or something. Yeah, we need to really make short work of these guys uh, before things get out of hand and we get attacked from two positions at the same time. And that's going to be basically untenable. And I'm trying to decide um, which group of tanks I need to target, but I think the left group has a better chance of being targeted. And the zone of fire is still very complicated. Um, hopefully the AI is able to kind of smooth the transition between uh, hiding and start firing and attacking. So we are being targeted from two sides. This is what I was afraid of. Yeah, I don't think I can defend you know, from two uh, sources of fire at the same time. So yeah, I need to really quickly um, get these guys off our backs. And I was kind of, um, it was unfortunate because the Panzers cannot help this 88 mil. It was a bit, I think it was a bit too conservative place. I think I have, I should have been more aggressively uh, charging toward those uh, tanks that are threatening the ADMB right now. Yeah, so we are uh, trading fire. ADMB was able to knock out one tank. So another one. There is like a one nearby. Oh, okay. So it was the that nearby tank was able to quickly dispatch that. So that was a really big loss for us. Even bigger loss than before because that still had a lot of AP rounds. So. All the 88 mil um, on the other side of the river has been knocked out. Our defense has been severely compromised, marginalized, and um, scattered to the wind. So really, uh, we have only one 88 mil that can go up against KB-1. It's a really, really big, uh, big trouble. And this guy is now really running. Uh, this guy has been commanding the guns on the ridge. Now he's coming back. Uh, ho hopefully the other gunners will follow, but they're shaken and all like rowdies, I don't know that they can act quickly enough to follow the lead. So we are being distracted by infantry once again. I think that because I didn't set the arc of fire beforehand, uh, so that's why they are shooting at the infantry needlessly. Yeah, so that was a really momentous turn, I think, for the Russians because they can now, uh, now emerge from their positions and then start creeping toward us with their KV-1s. And it's going to be very difficult for us to defend, you know, from two firing groups of tanks at the same time. Yeah, so these guys will lumber toward the, the first objective flag for them. 
down the highway. Then KB1 should stay uh, within the road because uh, they are really heavy. They are not be able to travel that fast and keep up with the T-34s. And then just trying to measure the line of sight um, just to be prepared to... Yeah, just prepared for any of these groups to emerge. And then they will try to uh, overwhelm us. And I'm just setting up a zone of fire a bit larger arc of fire because um, yeah, I just want to get rid of one side first. Yeah, just concentrate on defeating one side and then worry about the other guys later. And I'm choosing this side because obviously the KV ones are really slow, so I'm kind of baiting the, the huge Russian tanks will arrive a bit later. And then if they come in piecemeal, then uh, it'd be easy for us to challenge them with these uh, Panzer 3s and 4s. Yeah, so we start shooting, and um, the other tanks that are traveling on the highway, the right group of Russian tanks, are being distracted by these defeated uh, guys, the gunners, who are, are really no threat to them, but they're still shooting at these guys. They yeah, start moving though. Yeah, the KV-1s, I don't know how many they are, but the T-34s are taking charge. And this tank is um, the left group of tank that has just emerged out of the forest, the T-34, and we start shooting. And this guy must be the green guy because he kind of retreats the first side of the Panzer III. And one of our tanks has been knocked out, but then this uh, tank uh, just knocked out. Our tank has also been knocked out, so this is basically a tank battle just quickly enveloping this uh, side. And one of the guys had the right idea, I tried to run back, but yeah, the Russian tanks are just strafing it. All of these guys are trying to, yeah, eliminate it or something, and they just held bent. They really pissed off at the two guns that held them up for like 10 turns. Yeah, so we're still shooting at them using machine guns, so obviously the tanks are undeterred. Even the guys on the top of the T-34 is undeterred. They just keep charging in, shooting their machine guns. Okay, so another um, yeah tribute to the Russian glasses armor there, T-34, ricocheting one of the uh, high explosive shells or armor piercing shells. You can see the two groups now emerging. So um, we are choosing the we are choosing to battle the left group, and I think we are pretty successful knocking out two tanks in the last turn. So we continue to um, yeah just concentrate our fire as best as possible. Yeah, too bad about the 88 mil because that could definitely help right now. The tanks will have to carry their own weight now. Yeah, just try their best. Uh, using the positions that are set up for them, uh, be able to, to use it to really quickly identify targets and then yeah, calibrate their guns as quick as possible. And then they're doing a pretty good job right now, front turret penetration, this guy is running back, I think routed. And this guy also being penetrated, but not knocked out. These guys are really tough, tough vehicles, tough armor. And uh, yeah, we are shooting and even the guns are now acting up. I think this is what I wanted for them to do, but then a lot quicker, a lot faster. The guns have been dormant for too long, and now they're shooting and then was able to knock it out. And uh, it was a really good shot. I think far shot he was able to make it, so we're really lucky there. The guns are really bringing their powerful guns to bear and another penetration going on so the Russian T-34s cannot advance from where they are, exposed and knocked out once again another knockout, another penetration going on I think third tank now being uh, attacked by these tanks I think they're really doing a good job concentrating their fire, their guns and this guy already has been knocked out and um, unfortunately this guy is now being caught in a crossfire that I don't think he's able to move I don't know whether I was intentionally doing that because I noticed that the Russian tanks are stopping in its tracks just trying to target these guys. So, you know, let them just run, you know, run around in the field, like distracting all the you know, Russian <laughs> tanks. I don't know, it's really cold hearted, but I don't think I did it intentionally. I just left it uh, to its own device because I really cannot help them. They're all routed, they're in panic. Okay, so, um, now we are being uh, targeted by one of those uh, right uh, side tanks. If we are not able to challenge the tanks on the left, this turn would have been just, yeah, just diabolical because these two groups would have been shooting at us at the same time from both sides. 
So the T-34s and KB-1s would have been just making a, you know, just would have made a mincemeat out of this defense. And um, right now I can definitely see that the tanks pollution has been pretty good so far. But then the gun pollution in front of those tanks have been pretty suboptimal because they are not really shooting at the T-34s like I wanted them to uh, shoot. So some of the uh, T-34s can be killed, so-called killed, by the Panzer III's, but they cannot be saved for the KV-1s because they have like 100mm thick armor on the front. Yeah, so it's just out of the range of these guns, just not good enough. I'm just trying to save my tanks, but then um, the tanks have to carry all the weight of defending this from one side. Yeah, so KV-1s are slowly making its way, and it's a really scary sight, because um, I don't know about the back of their armor, but front of their armor, I don't think anything can challenge them. And more and more T-34s are emerging from the left as well, so we need to keep an eye on that. And the tanks are doing a good job of um, keeping tabs. And this guy, this guy could be the titular Katukov. Or this guy, this guy could be Katukov, who knows. Yeah, oh my goodness, this guy using the broken down hull of the tank as a cover. Yeah, very smart, and then he was able to shoot. Oh my goodness, so he's targeting one of our tanks in the front, not even the gun. We are shooting back, of course, but then, um, yeah, it's really compromised because the other tank is using this um, broken down tank as a cover and he's able to um, disable one of our guns, my goodness. So our tank... Oh, okay, so that guy finally gets eliminated. And Katukov himself is directing the traffic down the highway. Yeah, wow, like a boss. Just checking out the left. I think we are doing a far better job of defending against the left group than the other group with the KB-1s. But we have to really make sure that we at least get um, the left group out of contention, out of battle. So we are turning all the guns to really um, you know, add to the firepower because one of our tanks their gun is now rendered inoperable, so the it's really useless. They might have sent... I think I just sent it across the bridge or something. Um, Alright, so... Um, we are just still waiting for the Crack 88 in the middle to wait until the KV-1s come a bit closer within our range. And this guy, yeah, this guy was the guy who broke down our gun, he's still aiming at the same tank. And was just missed it, just missed the tank right there, trying to move out of the position. And uh, yeah, the Soviet tanks on the right is still um, charging. Well, not really charging, creeping. And this guy is another tank that has appeared on the left, on our left. And is able to quickly be defended, quickly be resisted by these tanks pretty quick. Wow, okay, so it was able to hit us some kind of sore spot and it exploded. Um, T-34s, when they explode, uh, they apparently have two hatches and they open the hatches for the tankers to escape and some guys thought that it looked like Mickey Mouse or something. I think Katuko got off, my goodness. Alright, so, um, okay, so the KV-1 was really, really heavy tank and it can get bogged down just like that. So it is bogged down, it is uh, basically out of running. Uh, it is just um, not possible, not mobile. Yeah, so one KV-1 has been uh, uh, rendered obsolete by nature. Hopefully uh, some more uh, KV-1s get stuck. Yeah, but I cannot really rely on the game mechanics to actually uh, rescue us. Yeah. We have destroyed some fair amount of tanks, as you can see, but still we have a couple of tanks now left on the left. And just in time for these guys so down, you know, along the highway to challenge us, and I think we really have no chance but to uh, get away. I should have probably done this a turn earlier, but uh, what can you do? Um, we just have to make... Um, yeah, we just yeah ricochet, so the glasses armory is resisting our shells pretty easily, even though we have a pretty good um, targeting. And um, my goodness, yeah, so we are being targeted and trying to get out of the way. 
And that missed. Unfortunately. Yeah. And the T-34, wow, was able to land a really good shot um, against the moving target. So, yeah, that was, I don't know, that was uh, rather unfortunate. And the KV-1 finishes it off and explodes into smithereens. So the tank on our on our on the left side of the highway is rendered obsolete, it's decimated. And now the guns are there to just challenge it. And then KV-1 is actually taking charge of the heaviest tank, the slowest tank. Yeah, it's really cool to see that the Soviet tanks... Oh my goodness, another knocked out tank. That is a veteran tank that has been knocked out just like that in the first shot. Yeah, that was a really, really bad turn for us. And they're keeping pace with the KV-1, which is really smart because, you know, these guys are combining fire. Katukov is a genius. Anyways, um, yeah, we are severely undermanned right now. We only have one piece of machinery to help us, which is the Crack 88, which I crack it open right now in this turn. To try to uh, you know at least get some of the KV ones out of action because if these guys reach these guns, it's basically I think they can just run it over and they cannot do anything about it. Only the infantry with its bundles of grenade can challenge it, but I don't know whether the infantry will be able to do anything with all these T-34s you know on its side and supporting it. Yeah, it's going to be pretty ugly for us. So we really need to use that 88 mil. Um, yeah, the crack 88 mil flag in order to um, resist these guys, and I don't know why he's targeting the T34. Um, right, okay, so another casualty. My goodness, these Russian T34s are really skilled. Yeah, they're just just raking our raking our Panzers, and there's one more uh, T34. Oh, gun hit. That's good. I think that's the crack 88 mil that disabled it. And you can see one more uh, Panzer on the left side. Uh, crawls out and um, I think one of our guns can take care of it right it's uh, close enough down within range yeah so front turret has been penetrated so we're doing a good job and this 88 mil is also joining the action which is uh, not really optimal because it has to turn to face the KV-1s and the KV-1 is actually targeting right now and then um, yeah okay so this guy on the left has been taken care of yeah and it destroyed suitably and the KV-1, its first shot, is able to knock the crack black out. So we are... We are teethless, folks. We are clawless. All our teeth has been pulled out. Well, at least have a few fangs left, but I don't think they can actually go up against the rock that is the KV-1. <laughs> yeah, so all the 88 mil has been knocked off. There goes my victory. The T-34s are still active, uh, trying to finish the remnant of our defense. Not a pretty sight, but we just have to do what we have. Um, but then 88 mil, uh, the crack 88 mil uh, is just too much of a loss, too big a loss for us to um, yeah, fill. So big hole in our defensive gap. And I don't know whether I can actually, um, I mean, we have to try, but now I'm in a kind of panic mode, uh, trying to conserve the tank mode in order to you know, get as many scores as possible. Yeah, so these KV-1s are now shooting and on a casualty, my goodness. Okay, so this has been penetrated, so this guy retreats. Uh, but then, yeah, we are not really having a good time right now with all these accurate KV-1s. Oh my goodness, knocked out. Yeah, the KV-1 is just, just fortress, fortress. No wonder the Germans like ordered um, right away the construction of tigers and panthers after you know going through <laughs> you know going through battles like this one too many times i think they just had enough it's like who cares about like you know shoddy bridges that we have to cross we build like the real engineer and build a new bridge just order like our own 80 ton monsters yeah so kv1 is just yeah, it's just a sight to behold. It is really big and strong and can be bogged down, but so far it's just, just pushing through. Yeah, unperturbed. Thank you for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. I come back with the final episode of Kratkov, or sorry, Katukov Strikes Back. So, hope you have a nice day and see you next time. <laughs>